Hi everybody, welcome back. Now recently I shared a video with you showing my car having its tow bar being fitted. So click to it up here. In that video I said I was going to do a follow-up to show you what things you need to do if you've just had a brand new tow bar fitted to your car. So in this video I'm going to share with you some of the things you need to do to your newly fitted tow ball and uh, show you how to get it ready for your first towing. Now in that tow bar fitting video I showed you an area of the tow bar which I thought was the point where you connect your breakaway cable. And in that video I showed that you actually couldn't fit a breakaway cable through it because it just wasn't big enough. Now I had lots of people say to me, well you need to fit a shackle to that, it needs to be a D-link shackle or at least a drop down hook in order to have something on there to connect your breakaway cable to. And I was thinking the same thing, I was thinking shackle would fit on there no problem and connect my breakaway cable to that. But in further investigation, it turns out that that hole is actually blanked off by the swan neck tow ball itself. So you can't actually physically get anything through it anyway. So a shackle or a D-link or a carabiner, nothing will actually go through it. So in all intents and purposes, my car right now has no breakaway cable mounting point. So I will follow up on this in a future video, but for now, the breakaway cable has to be looped around the swan neck. It's not brilliant, it's not perfect, but if there is no breakaway cable attachment point, it is, in the eyes of the law, an acceptable way of mounting the breakaway cable. Now obviously there are problems with that because if there is a detachment, likelihood is, the breakaway cable will follow the hitch and come off the car. So that renders the whole process and the point of a breakaway cable completely useless. But anyway, like I said, I'm going to follow up with this in a future video. But for today, let's get on and show you what we need to do to our tow ball. Now when you first get your tow bar fitted to your car, your tow ball, whether it's a detachable or a fixed or a swan neck, or no matter what it is, generally speaking, the tow ball will be covered in paint. Now that paint needs to be taken off of the tow ball. The reason for that is modern caravans these days have got stabiliser hitch heads and the stabiliser works by pushing pads against the tow ball to cause a bit of friction, therefore stabilising the outfit. Now with paint on the tow ball, that will interfere between the friction pads and the tow ball and it won't cause enough friction, rendering the friction pads useless and contaminating your hitch head. So, your hitch head needs to be dry, it needs to be clean, and it needs to be void of grease or any contaminants, and it certainly doesn't need to have any paint on it. So what we need to do is we need to remove the paint off of the tow ball, and we can do that by literally scratching off the paint. So yesterday I went down to Halfords and I picked up some essentials that I need in order to remove the paint from the tow ball. I picked up some aluminium oxide paper, I picked up an assortment of wet and dry, I also picked up some degreaser from the bike section and then also picked up some rubber gloves as well because believe me this can be quite a filthy job. So now they've got everything in order let's head on over to the car and let's start removing the paint from the tow ball. So this is the tow ball that we're going to remove the paint from and as you can probably see it's quite a thin layer of paint which is covering the entire ball. So what we want to do is remove all the paints from the ball that you can see here. We don't want to affect the stem too much just the ball. So our first pass is with the 80 grit aluminium oxide paper. I'm pulling off small pieces of the paper, small enough to get around the actual ball, and then I'm just working individual sections at a time. So I'm making a start behind the ball because that's the bit I cannot see, and then I'm making my way around the entire surface in an even pass. Now a point worth noting here is that it would be better if I just used some masking tape or just some tape or some protection around the actual stem of the tow bar. Uh, I completely forgot to do that in this case. So unfortunately you will see throughout this video that I will be marring up and slightly uh, scuffing the surface of the uh, paint on the shaft of the tow bar. Now don't go too hard at this stage, you don't want to be too abrasive with the aluminium oxide paper. What we want to do is we want to just make sure we remove the paint. We don't want to change the shape of the ball and if we concentrate too much in one spot we could possibly cause a flat spot on the tow ball. Take it nice and steady, remove as much paint as you possibly can. There may be a couple of areas that you miss off, certainly as you will see I've missed off a couple of areas, but they become quite apparent in the next step and it's very easy to rectify as well. 
So the next stage is to move on to the wet and dry and I'm going to start off the process using some 240 grit paper and I'm just going to rip off a small square of the paper big enough so I can wrap it around the toe ball and then clamp my hand over that and just rub it around the actual ball. Now we make sure you use plenty of water, keep it well lubricated and you'll remove a lot of the scratches that we've put into the toe ball from the aluminium oxide paper. Now you'll notice that we've missed off a couple of areas of paint and that's become very apparent as soon as a lot of the scratches have been removed. But as you can see, this wet and dry is actually removing quite a bit of the paint as well. To be honest with you, if you couldn't get hold of any aluminium oxide paper, well, 240 grit wet and dry will remove the paint just as well. It will just take a little bit longer to actually do. Okay, so after the 240 grit wet and dry, this is how the toe ball is now looking. As you can see, it's a remarkable difference from what we started off with, but we still want to remove some of those scratches and tidy up the surface of the ball even further. So we're going to repeat the process, but what we're going to do now is we're going to change the paper from 240 grit up to 400 grit, keeping it nice and wet, and do exactly the same process once again. So just after a couple of minutes of rubbing with the 400 grit wet and dry, this is the result of our work. And as you can see now, the toe ball itself is looking really clean, really grey, and uh, looks incredibly good use. And to be honest with you, this would be good enough to go and toe with right now. All we'd need to do is clean it with some degreaser and we'd be on the way. But no, I'm going to go a step further. And now we're going to use some 800 grit wet and dry, and we're going to refine some of those scratches even further. And now we're on to the final step. This is the step where we're going to degrease the toe ball, remove any contaminants from it, and then it makes it completely ready for us to go and tow. As you can see, the toe ball has now picked up a bit of a sheen, and that's just using the wet and dry on progressively smaller grits. So now what we're going to do is we're going to spray the toe ball with the degreaser. Now the degreaser will evaporate off of the toe ball pretty quickly. So make sure you rub it on the toe ball and also onto the wet and dry. And for this I'm going to use the 1200 grit wet and dry just to help remove any contaminants from the toe ball. So make sure you keep applying the degreaser as it dries out and evaporates. And then once complete wipe down with a clean cloth and that's it. The toe ball is now completely degreased clean and ready for us to go and tow the caravan. There we go guys, that's everything that you need to know in order to make your tow ball fit for your first tow. Now typically it's just started to rain so I'll wrap this one up fairly quickly. Needless to say I am going to do a follow-up on the breakaway mounting points on this car and where I can mount my breakaway cable securely. So look out for that one coming in the next few weeks. Until then guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to run in before it really starts pelting down. Must be you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.